Good morning, Mrs. Austin here for your next Bible lesson and craft. Um, would like to continue what we've been talking about the past couple of message, um, lessons. And this one is specifically geared toward when God fed his people with quail and manna. Let's start with a prayer this morning. I'd like to begin with the Hail Mary, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy people. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, so um, the past couple of lessons, uh, we learned about how God essentially um, paved the way for the freedom of the Israelites from their slavery in Egypt. And uh, through Passover, they were able to get away from Egypt. They began their journey through the desert. And um, part of the way through their journey, the Pharaoh decided he did not want to agree to the release of the Israelites. So uh, he pursued them, and that was our last lesson when we learned about how Moses parted the Red Sea for the escape again from the Egyptians and um, how the Egyptians were covered up by the sea, and um, we had a craft that went along with that as well. If you are following along in your Catholic Children's Bible, uh, we are on pages 126 and 127, and this lesson specifically is for Exodus 16, um, Exodus chapter 16, where we learn, like I said, how God feeds his people with quail and manna. So um, we are going to make this guy, this quail today, to help you remember um, about how it said um, in the evening or in some of the passages I read where they talk about twilight, where God sent uh, the quail, the flock descended on the camp where the Israelites were, and um, they were grumbling, they were hungry, and uh, they were asking, you know, um, when, when are we going to have food, and um, their concerns were addressed, and the flock of quail descended, and in the morning they had manna. So we're going to make this quail. I am going to um, include a link so that you can print um, two, let me try and hold it the correct way, two sheets, one with the wings and then one with the other parts, the eyes and the feet and such. Um, if you are unable to print that or do not have access to print that, um, I will walk you through some of the things that you can do to uh, to make this as well. So I'm gonna fold this down so that you can see what we're doing here with, with the craft. You're going to need a paper plate. If you don't have a paper plate, then you can certainly just cut a circle out of some white paper. There again, I'm an advocate of using um, things that you already have around the house. So if you have a piece of paper with something written on the other side, then just fold it, cut a circle, and you'll be perfectly fine to make your quail. You are going to need scissors. I use double-sided tape. If you don't have that, you could certainly use glue or a glue stick. You're going to need a paintbrush. You can see I've used this one plenty. It's one of my favorites. Um, some kind of paper towel or napkin or something that you can use to wipe off the uh, paint. And paint. Um, I'm using something called, what is this one, River Rock which was the body of our quail. Um, also a selection of colored pencils, markers, crayons, something that you can use to color in wings, his little eyebrows, his feet. And I used a mixture, I used paint, I used marker, I used colored pencil. So I, I used a lot of different types of things to finish off my quail. So the first thing you're going to need to do is find something um, that you can lay your paper plate on. 
I just used a um, pad of paper and some paper towels to keep it clean. And you can probably see the circle here where I did my first one, my example for you. And then all you're going to do is take your paint and paint the circle, okay? Now, I'm not gonna have you watch me paint an entire circle, but make sure that you have good coverage because the um, face and the wings and so on doesn't cover the entire plate. And also go all the way down to the edge. And you see my plate has little ridges, so I had to go back and, and make sure that I had good coverage. Um, also, when you're doing a craft, and I think I've said it before, it might have been a while, um, think about what you're doing. Uh, what are you making here? We're making a quail. This was food. This was how God was going to feed his people that were hungry, that were on their journey, um, their journey of freedom from slavery. So this is important. Think about why you're making this. Um, of course, concentrate on painting and doing a nice, neat job. But think about why you're doing what you're doing. Now, after you get this painted, my recommendation, and it is much easier, I believe, to um, color the... I'm going to move this out of the way so that I have something to color on. There we go. To color before you cut. Uh, I just think it's easier and also you can be a little sloppy with it. So for example, if I were trying to stay in the lines on my wing, you see that might be a little harder. But if I just kind of do like this and I'm not staying within my lines, it doesn't matter. Because when I go back and cut it, I'm going to cut that part off if that makes sense. So those are my wings and I chose to make them brown. My other sheet, my feet, I used a darker brown. Does not matter, it is your quail, do what you wish. Um, I used a darker brown on my feet. Maybe you would choose to make your feet um, maybe orange. Okay, you could make them orange. Um, looks like this one's almost out of ink. But you get my point. Over the eyebrows, I chose yellow. There again, this is yours. Do as you wish. My beak, I did a different color of blue. There again, I just think it's easier, easier personal preference to color before you cut. This is the face, this large oval. And like I was telling you, if you can't print this out, a couple of ideas, the wings, it reminds me of a hand. So maybe trace your hands, color your hands in, and your hands could be the wings. Okay, you could trace your hand on a piece of paper. Let me use a darker color here. No, there we go. And when you finish tracing your hand, it kind of looks a little bit like the wings that we have. And then once you um, do that color, just like you would normally uh, with the brown for the wings, and I'm trying to make it darker so you can see. And then there, you have a perfectly good wing. The eyes are just circles, the feet, I think it kind of looks like a Y. You could have your own opinion. This kind of looks like the letter C, much like the waves that we made during the last lesson for the parting of the Red Sea. And this is just an oval or an egg shape for the face. So do your best if you are unable to, um, to print this out. Now back to our coloring. This is the um, tail feathers here and this is the face. I chose to do uh, a color of gray. There again, your quail, you can do how you wish. Uh, I just colored. I did choose to stay in, in the lines here because this bottom part remained white. Okay, almost like his chin. Once you've colored everything in, 
you're going to cut everything out and place it. I started with doing the wings underneath the face. Then I stuck that down to the center of the plate. I put his eyes and beak and his little top piece. I, I should know the name of that, I do not. I stuck his feet down and then his little tail feathers here. And like I said, I just used double-sided tape. However, you can certainly use glue or a glue stick, which I don't have out right now. It does work a little easier if you lay out everything that you need ahead of time. And don't use too much paint so it'll dry a little quicker for you so that you can get everything together. If you paint first, then while you're coloring and cutting everything out, it should be dry in plenty of time. So this is our quail. I hope you enjoy making him. I certainly did. Um, I also want to remind you to think about what it is that you are doing when you do the craft and why you're doing it. Um, and again, like you have, if you are following along in the Bible, how God feeds his people with quail and manna, um, think about what it is, what their needs were and how God met those needs. And that is really the most important thing. Um, also remember that God meets our needs every day. Uh, just make sure we keep those lines of communication open with him and pray and ask for what you want, but also one of my most important things is give thanks for what you already have. So let's finish today. I'd like to do the um, guardian angel prayer. So let's recenter and in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day be at my side, to light, to guard, to rule and guide. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen.